couple of issues. Um, when I say a couple of issues, I mean a couple of small problems. But uh, I'm here now, and we're going to get things underway, OK? Um, I thought that we'd talk about some social phrasal words, because we spend a lot of our time um, making plans with other people and inviting people to do things with us. Uh, and get invited to do things with other people. So I thought today we'd look at um, some useful phrasal verbs, uh, which, like other verbs we've looked at in the past, uh, don't have a, an immediately clear uh, meaning to them, but which we use very frequently. Okay. Uh, let me share something with you now. Here's the first verb I want to talk about, OK? Uh, come over. I'm familiar underneath it. And the, you can see from my meeting, come to somebody's place, usually your house, that over suggests uh, going to somebody's house or going to where somebody is or going to where somebody lives, OK? The example I've got there at the bottom of the screen in blue says, do you want to come over later and play X Xbox? OK? And you can see that there's no mention of the person's house in that uh, suggestion. The person has just said, do you want to come over? And the listener understands that they are being invited to where this person uh, is, or most probably where this person lives, OK? I want to point something out to you, that when you use come over, come around, or come around, they all have the same meaning, OK? So another example there. Um, sorry, they all have the same meaning, and that meaning is to somebody's house, where somebody lives and possibly where somebody is at a particular time, OK? Uh, the example I've given you is, I'm going round to John's later. OK? Now, here, I have included John's house. You can see I've got house in brackets because it's not necessary. The going round suggests John's house. But I have had to include John's here, because uh, if I don't say that, it's not going to be clear to the listener whose house I'm going to. Okay? If I just say, I'm going round later for dinner, you're going to ask me, where? Go, where are you going round? So I need to tell you, I'm going round to John's. Okay? But as you can see, the house is not necessary. I just have to say John's, and you will understand that I'm talking about John's house or John's apartment, where John lives. Okay? Uh, you might be asking, is it OK to say, I'm going round to John later for dinner? And yes, it is. Yes, it is. But remember, uh, it's very common for us to use uh, possession with uh, places that are associated with people. For example, um, another word for a, a pharmacy in English is a chemist. OK, that's chemist apostrophe X, uh, meaning the chemist's pharmacy or the chemist's shop. Um, and there are other examples of that as well. We often say, I'm going to the doctor's, I'm going to the dentist's apostrophe S, not I'm going to the doctor or I'm going to the dentist, which are also OK. Um, so what's important to remember is come over, come around, come around, go over, go round, go around. And other verbs using over, round, and around are all exactly the same. And they all mean they all, the, the particle over, round, and around refers to a person's place. So the first example I had was 
do you want to come over later and play Xbox? Meaning, do you want to come to my house later and play Xbox? And the second example that I've got is, I'm going around to John's house later. later. OK, so uh, we looked at two phrasal verbs already. We're only in a few minutes into the uh, broadcast today. OK, um, so let's take a look at a couple more. All right? um, we're going to keep the, um, the, I think we're going to keep them. Take a look at the next one. I think we're going to keep the verb and change the part of where it might be the other way around. It might be the opposite. And let me go back into the documents, okay? Um, drop over. Okay, so we've kept the particle, so we can also say drop around and drop around. But we've changed the verb. We're not saying come or go or saying drop. So you, you can expect a different meaning. And there is a slight difference in meaning. My definition says visit somebody's place. That means where somebody is. But often, without making an arrangement with the person, and possibly for a short time. Okay. So sometimes you uh, have an arrangement. For example, a person invites you to come over and play Xbox, or you go over to a person's house for dinner because. They invited you to come over for dinner. Uh, but sometimes you just go to somebody's house uh, and you don't tell them you're coming. Or you do tell them you're coming, but you are not planning to stay for a long time. Take a look at my example. I'm dropping over to Jobs to return this book. And then the promise to the mister, I won't be long. In other words, I'm not going to spend a long time at John's house, OK? Um, I can say here, I'm going over to John's to return this book. But if I say I'm dropping over to John's, it emphasizes, it underlines to the listener that this is going to be a short visit to John's, OK? Right, let's take a look at another one. Here we retain, we've kept the verb, and we've changed the particle. Okay, so we can expect another difference in meaning, but there must be some uh, continuation in the meaning as well. So let's drop in. Once again, you're visiting somebody's place, and once again, you are doing it without making an arrangement and possibly for a short time. Okay. But the difference is your starting point, where you are when you drop in. When you are dropping over, or when you are dropping round, or dropping around, or going over, or coming over, etc., to a person's place, you are doing that by leaving your place where you live, or possibly leaving where you work, okay, and then traveling to the person's house, okay? So what's important with going over, dropping over, coming over, round or around, is that there is travel to the place involved. When you drop in, you are there. You are near the house. You are in the neighborhood. You are in the vicinity. You have traveled to the area for something else. Maybe you went shopping there. Maybe you met a friend in the area. And now you find yourself, you realize that you're in the area where your friend lives. So you don't have to travel to the person's house, OK? You are already almost there. So in that case, you drop in, OK? And my example says that. If you're ever in my neighborhood, you should drop in for a cup of tea. I can't say, if you're in my neighborhood, you should drop over for a cup of tea. It doesn't make sense. When I invite you to drop over, I understand 
that you're going to travel from the place you're at just to come to my place. When I say drop in, I know that you're already very near my place and you have already traveled there for another reason, not to see me, but, as we say in English, you can kill two birds with one stone. So you saw your friend earlier, and because you saw your friend in my neighborhood, you can now drop in and see me. Drop in meaning visit me in my house. Okay? Let me come out of that for a minute. Okay, so you can see how the particle, this is the, the, the um, what looks like a preposition uh, after the verb, changes the, uh, the movement, okay? Whereas the verb uh, is changing the meaning, okay? Come and go are often confused by students. Um, and they don't need to be. I mean, generally, we say, come here, okay? And we say, go away, all right? Um, if you are in your country, okay, and you have plans to visit Ireland, for example, to improve your English, then you tell everybody, I'm going to Ireland because you are leaving your country, you're exiting your country, and you are distancing yourself from the people in your country. Okay? If you have friends in Ireland, okay, um, you will tell your friends, hey, guess what? I'm coming to Dublin, because you will be bringing yourself nearer to your friends. You will be approaching your friends in Ireland. You will be arriving in Ireland, okay? So that's the basic uh, difference between go and come. A lot of students say, um, you know, to me, oh, when I, in my classroom here in, in Dublin, when I come back to Spain, or when I come back to um, Germany, or I'm coming back to Italy on Friday, and they can say that to me because they are going to be putting distance between me and, and them. They are going to be traveling away from me and traveling away from my country. So when they say that to me, they have to say, I'm going back. Okay? But of course, if they're talking to their family in Spain or in Italy or in Germany or wherever, um, they will say, hi, please don't forget, I'm coming back on Friday. Okay, uh, so those are do indicate uh, change different perspectives of movement, although they don't actually indicate different uh, movements necessarily. Okay, they indicate different perspectives. Uh, but you can see from the phrase that we just looked at, uh, dropping in and dropping over, uh, in and over indicate completely different uh, movement situations. Okay. Um, Whereas what the cover and drop are suggesting is a difference in meaning because drop is short term, drop suggests you didn't make an arrangement. Okay, so the, there's a difference. The difference is not in relation to movement. Okay, let's go back into it. Um, I need to screen share here with you. Okay, this is a nice one. All over, uh, obviously. You can see how easily students get confused because when you normally use the call, you uh, think of telephones or mobile phones, okay? And speech, talking. Uh, but this has got nothing to do with that. Uh, call over uh, is very similar in meaning to go over or come over or drop over. It means visit a person's place, okay? It does not mean call somebody on the telephone, all right? So my example below says, I'm calling over to Don later for dinner, okay? Uh, underneath that, I've got another example. It's shy. I've got, do you want to come over later, which was the first example I gave you. We can substitute call and say, do you want to call over later and play Xbox? And there's no difference in me, okay? 
because call over just means visit somebody's place. I said place there because it's a catch-all word. It's a, it's a word that will uh, mean house or apartment or whatever accommodation you have. Okay? Um, but please remember that there's no connection with telephones if, when you use call over. Okay? Um, if you want to talk about just speaking on the telephone with somebody, you talk about calling a person. Not calling to a person, just calling a person. Okay? Call John and ask him if he wants to call over and play Xbox with us. All right? There you've inserted into that example the two different meanings of the verb. Call John and ask him, ask him, ask him if he wants to call over and play Xbox with us later. All right? Call over. Let's substitute it with come over. Okay? Call John and ask him if he wants to come over and play Xbox with us later. And even use drop over. Call John and ask him if he wants to drop over and play Xbox with us later. Drop here being inserted because it's, it can be a little more informal. Okay. In this uh, example, we're not suggesting that John will only come for a short time. Let's use the drop because it's a little more informal. Okay. All right. Let's see what else we have. I've got two more for you here, and these are two more the students often confuse. Okay. We've got bring somebody along, and that's my basic structure. Bring somebody along. You doesn't have to be a person. It could be something. Okay. It could be a fact. Uh, it could be beer, for example. I'm sure you have received Facebook invites to parties with the initials B Y O B on them, and you know B Y O B means bring your own beer. So the person throwing the party, because we don't make or do parties, we throw them or have them, the person throwing the party is not going to provide their guests with alcohol. The guests need to bring the alcohol they want to make to the party. Okay? And you know as well that if you're invited to a smaller, more intimate dinner party in somebody's house, it's polite to bring a gift along. Maybe you bring some flowers, maybe bring a bottle of wine, which is very common, or bring some chocolates with you. Okay? Now, along here means really to an event. Okay? So you are going to a place, but the important thing is that when you arrive at the place, an event will be happening. Okay? So I say, I'm having a party on Friday. Do you want to come? You can bring your friends along, too, if you want. Okay? So bring your friends along means bring your friends to my party. My party is the event. All right? Okay. Um, uh, the that seems straightforward. That seems that doesn't seem too difficult, does it? Okay. Uh, but please notice that it's similar to come over in that we are not naming the place where the party is happening. We have just uh, said that there is an event in this situation. It's a party, and the word along means to that event, okay? Um, so in my earlier example, I said, if a friend of yours is having a dinner party, it's polite of you to bring a bottle of wine along or to bring a box of chocolates along, okay? And clearly along means to your friend's dinner party. Now, this is sometimes confused by students with another phrase of verb called tag along. Okay? And the important thing that you need to understand here is the difference in structure between tag along with someone and bring someone along with you to a party or to an event. Okay? So look at them again. Tag along with someone and bring someone along. Okay? Students often, if you look at the red at the bottom of the screen, 
which is not saying tag someone along. So I can tag you along if you want. That you can't say that. That is not the structure. Okay, the structure is tag along, and if you want to include the person you are going with, it will come after the word along. Tag along with someone. Okay. The basic meaning then is a company somebody somewhere. In other words, the company somebody to a place. Uh, usually a social situation. And often at short notice. Okay, so here the person says to you, I'm meeting friends later for a drink. You're welcome to tie along if you want. So you're welcome to come with me. You're welcome to accompany me uh, when I go and meet my friends. And you can meet them with me. Okay, if you want. Uh, let's just be careful. I can't say to you, uh, you're welcome to bring along. Okay, uh, I say you you can come with me, so you can tag along with me. Okay, uh, I have an arrangement with my friends. I'm inviting you to join me, so and to go with me to meet them. So you tag along. This is my arrangement. Now, when I have what will I tell my friends if I call my friends to tell them that you are tagging along? What can I say? I'll either say, I'm bringing a friend along, okay, so just, I'm bringing a friend along, or I'll talk about my friend and say, a friend is tagging along. So notice the complete difference in subjects. I'm bringing a friend along. We have a subject, I, and we have the object, a friend. I'm bringing a friend along, and then the other one is just the subject, a friend. A friend is tagging along. Okay. Right. So uh, they are the phrase verbs I want to look at with you today. Um, it's now your job to try to put them into practice. Um, you will, if you have um, native speaking friends, you're going to hear these a lot. Okay, we use them all the time, and as I said at the beginning of this hangout, they're not immediately accessible, they're not immediately clear to the visitor because they, uh, do, they do not um, explicitly um, state, they do not name the places where the person is going. Those places are understood inside the particles, okay? Let's just quickly run through the video before I leave you. Um, so, tag along. All right, let me go back to the top. Okay, come over. First, we need to come to somebody's house, come to somewhere somebody lives, their apartment, their house. Um, I, I could be at another friend's house, uh, and I could uh, invite you to come over, uh, assuming my friend uh, is, uh, agrees. Uh, and once again, because I'm in that place at the time, I can say, just come over. Okay, So I can say, hey, I'm in Jobs. Why don't you come over? He'd love to meet you. Okay, So it doesn't have to be my house. But it has to be wherever I am uh, when I invite you. Okay, um, So the example I gave you was, do you want to come over later and play Xbox? And here, there's no mention of my place, because if I don't name a place, uh, it's the place where I am, and we assume the place where I am is my house. Okay. Uh, the other one that I told you there is that over, round, and around are all the same meaning. So I can't say to you, do you want to come around later and play Xbox? Do you want to come around later and play Xbox? Okay. Now be careful. You will find uh, other meanings with come round, for example. Okay. But in this context of, of, of visiting a person's place, all three have identical meanings. Okay. All right. Uh, we talked about dropping over, and the difference here is that it's possibly without telling the person you're coming. Possibly, it doesn't have to be. Okay. Uh, it could possibly be for a short time, and I also mentioned that it can be used informally instead of come. Okay. So I'm dropping over to Jobs to return this book. Here, I only want to return a book uh, because I only need a couple of minutes to do that. Uh, I will be back soon. I won't be long. I won't spend a long time with Jobs. 
We talked about how changing the particle changes the position of the movement, the location of the movement, okay? So I can drop into John's if I am in his neighborhood when I decide to visit him. If I am at my house or if I am at my workplace or if I am at somewhere else that involves me traveling to John's neighborhood, I will drop over or go over, okay? Uh, but if I am in his neighborhood, when I make the decision to visit him, then I will drop in, okay? Calling over should not be confused with telephone calls. There is no connection with telephone calls. It's the same as going over, coming over. It means visiting somebody uh, where they are, where they live, okay? The example is I'm calling over to John's later for dinner. I'm calling over to John's to return this book. I won't be long. Do you want to call over later and play Xbox? Um, and you can just take out that come there and put in call, and it's exactly the same in meeting. Okay, finally, we talked about bringing people along. So we bring people with us when we go to an event, off to the party, and then tag along. People go with us. They uh, come with us. They accompany us when we go to an event, okay? So crucially, I bring the person, the person tags along, okay? I bring you, you tag along, all right? Okay, so uh, that is our goodbye for the day. I hope you found it useful, and I shall be back with you again this time next week. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, have a good week. See you soon. Bye.